Hey guys, this is Lee, and in this video, we're gonna sail the most extreme sunfish in the world. I'm Scott Sandow, and uh, our fleet has been sailing together for about uh, 10 years. And previously, we sailed Europe dinghies, and we sailed those for quite a while until the parts became hard to find. Um, and then in 2015, we sort of en masse bought because we knew that the parts were ubiquitous and it was a one design fleet. We sailed the, the class legal sail and equipment mm -hmm. for about not quite a year, and Kevin Farrar, um, we designed a Mark 1 sail. Um, that was like a, a sail that had an 18 inch shorter boom. Uh, it was made out of Kevlar and it was mostly Mylar. Last year about this time, we premiered our Mark 2 design, which is what you see over there. And uh, the boom is another foot shorter, so our boom is like three feet shorter than it would be otherwise. So when in heavy air, it doesn't go in the water, and you, because we took this area, the sail area, and cut off the boom, and we moved it up. So we actually have 83 square feet of sail. You have a higher sail then from the regular sunfish sail. Well, we have the same upper upper spar. Okay. But we have a shorter boom, so we have a higher aspect sail. Uh huh. So we have, like, you see the flat head up there. Yep. So we actually have 80, uh, 83 square feet of sail as opposed to 75. Okay and uh, sails made out of um, you know, laminate fabric and, and monofilm. And oh, the, most importantly, um, it's got a, instead of the sail being tied under the upper sleeve or to the um, upper spar, we have a, a sleeve, which is um, when you're going upwind, it's, it's it makes a perfect foil. So there's no turbulence on the leading edge of the sail. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. it's really great. So like all that area that was turbulence and working against you, is now working for you. So, right, so there's no sail clips? No, there's not. How much do they cost and how do I get one? We're actually making some right now. And uh, if you buy one at a time, it's $12.50. Uh, if you buy- $12.50, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, if you buy four at a time, you get a little bit of a break. They're made by uh, Kevin Farrar in New London, Connecticut, Farrar Sales. I'd like to thank Scott Sandell, the fleet captain of the Breakwater Yacht Club Frostbite Fleet, for welcoming me and be able to show you the most extreme production sunfish in the world. If you are a sailor or want to be a sailor and like this content, I ask you to please subscribe to the channel. You can press that button right there and ring that notification bell so you know when I come out with a new video. Also, please smash that like button because it helps the YouTube algorithm push out my videos to more people who are interested in this content. Content. And for a thank you, here's a picture of a Shelter Island wild turkey. Okay, so it's now time to rig the most extreme sunfish in the world. Put back in here. Put is much shorter than your normal sunfish sail. Call this a high aspect rig. Has a flat head, shorter foot, has a sleeve, this is no sail clips, fully clear by our sail, you can see right through it, this is as long as my arm is. So this right here is a regular sunfish hull. Far sail and the Aero South rudder, also an Aero South dagger board, which I've reviewed in previous videos. I'm here on Shelter Island and I'm gonna sail it today on this beautiful breeze that we have, which is about 10 miles an hour. So we'll see how this performs. Always check your rotor bolt. This one's loose, so I'm gonna have to tighten this. Always check your rotor bolt before you go out.
dead air. It's light wind. It really got light here. Okay, we're making gauge on here. It's light. it a little bit. I'm going to try to hold this. I'm going to try to hold this. He's making distance on me. So obviously, no matter what kind of rig you're sailing, sailing in bad air is not, not fast. So he's, he went way lured. You could say that the point right? Yeah, go ahead and cross. Okay, going down wind in light air. It is blowing four. I'm gonna try to track down that sunfish here, which is about one, two, three, about eight boat lengths away. Cut my arrow south. Daggerboard here. Telltales are going. Pressure. This is actually unfortunate wind to dry down because there's so many holes in, in the wind now. So here we are with the Aero South Dagobord, the Aero South rudder, and the far sail. I got out in 12 mile an hour winds. It, it was a fun uh, setup to sail. The vertical rudder definitely is uh, a game changer as far as the feel of the boat. I was unable to sail boat for boat against Peter because by the time I got out, the, the wind died down. There definitely is some pointing ability advantage to this far sail. As far as downwind, my sample size was too small to figure out, so I'll have to come out here and sail more with the sail. It's, it's nice to see through the sail. So when you're sightseeing, this is a great sightseeing sail. It's a pretty cool sail. I, I like it. What do you think of the far sail? You, you sail with it all, all winter. Yeah, I mean, it's really nice with the mylar to be able to see who's coming. You don't have to worry about having a smaller window on your regular sunfish race sail. You know, it's, a, it's a flatter sail. It definitely points a lot higher. It's sort of that well-made sail. Um, you know, is it worth what it costs, should everyone have them? I don't know, I think the Sunfish setup is overall pretty good, where we have a low cost boat, it's easy to get into, it certainly adds some cost. Um, I'm not sure the performance increase is necessarily matching the cost, but you know, it's all one design in Sag Harbor pretty much, where at least everyone else has the same thing, and it was good to be able to race this winter with those guys, so. Nice. I have to choose racing or not racing, I'll choose racing every time. Basically at that point. That's right. A lot of people are doing the regular one design sailing with the sunfish, they, with the clips so they can adjust the position of the halyard. Yeah, you certainly cannot gen this up because you have a really narrow opening in the sail pocket to tie the halyard. And the other downside is you zoom in up there, you'll see a little bit of sail repair tape around there. And that is because the first time I went out, my halyard slipped on the spar a little bit. And the downside with this setup is if it slips on the spar, you're gonna go rip that pocket. Oh. So that was disappointing, but it's still repair tape up there. The folks in Sag Harbor would say there's less of a need to gens up this sail because with it so, having so much power up top and a puff, it sort of opens up a little bit in the roach. Okay. It's also a flatter cut. So it's a little easier to depower with the flat cut. It doesn't get as full. The boats are not rigged with a Cunningham. There's no grommet for a Cunningham. Oh. With this setup, you could probably um, add some tension through the tack and pull down the sleeve pretty hard, but okay. otherwise there's no grommet. Um, the next generation of these sails are being sailed loose footed. There are no foot grommets. Oh. They're kind of going laser style and they put carbon booms on them also. What generation is this one? This is generation two, or 2.5, I should say. It's like uh, MK2? This is the MK2.5. There's okay. now like a Mark III. The Mark III has even more material aloft. It really comes out almost perfectly square, but then the reach is cut down. So all of the versions of sails that they have uh -huh. are approximately 
the same square footage of sale area. You have different characteristics. I've noticed the one, the Mark III, between having it be loose footed and having more area aloft, it's really difficult to catch those guys downwind and they'll frequently pass downwind. Is that the Mark III? Yeah, the Mark III. Okay. I think the Mark III is probably a better iteration overall. A lot of variables going on. Right. Some of those guys have rigged outhauls that are adjustable. We'll have the outhaul along the boom and they'll cut a hole in the splash rail and have a cleat on a swivel coming out here to be able to adjust the outhaul from the cockpit, okay. which is pretty nice. Um, they'll have, since they've gone to the carbon boom, sort of opti style three to one center sheeting with the main sheet um, oh. so they don't have anything behind um, that's always sort of interesting yeah you know, there's a lot of guys who really like to experiment out there it's a lot of artists former sail makers creative types winemakers and it's a great group of people and a really low-key fleet they sail year-round they're out every okay, nice. single sunday as long as the conditions are okay where it's not too too cold I would say Sag Harbor freezes, you're not going out there. They're out there every single Sunday at 10, 17 in the morning, the first morning. Uh, like I said, it's some, some independent thinkers. Around 10, 17. That's the, that's the really approximate report time. It used to be they would tell people 10, then everyone's fashionably late. So they now moved to 10, 17. Nice. All right, thanks a lot, Peter. It's kind of cool because it's different. It's mylar and see-through. It looks pretty fast. So that's it. Thanks guys for watching. I'd like to give a special thanks to Peter Beardsley who set me up with his boat and his special fire sale. Please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. I really appreciate it and I'll see you on the water.